Good. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, before we get started, uh, I just wanted to uh, recognize uh, I lost my first college head football coach last week in Daryl Mudra. And uh, uh, Mudra taught me so much as, uh, as a player. And I was only with Daryl for a couple of years, uh, but he had a huge impact on my life. And it was sad for me to, to lose coach, uh, 93 years old, unbelievable uh, life he lived in football. He started uh, the national championship tradition at North Dakota State in the 60s. And I didn't know that when I played for him in the 80s at Northern Iowa until I went back to North Dakota State and the impact that he had on that football program, that community, as well as Eastern Illinois, Western Illinois, uh, Northern Iowa, all these schools. And, and uh, had a number of opportunities to visit with him uh, over the last 10 years, uh, probably not the last two or three, though, uh, because of some health issues that uh, Daryl had. But uh, Terry Allen, who I also played for, um, and I have communicated a lot about how Coach was doing and uh, um, what a great life uh, Daryl lived. And uh, um, thankful I had the opportunity to uh, play for him and uh, get to know him. And, and uh, just want to rest in peace, Coach. Uh, he meant the world to me. Um, great game by our guys on Saturday. Uh, phenomenal effort, uh, great poise. Uh, we didn't panic. We started fast like we needed to. Um, they came back like I knew they would, and we found a way to continue uh, to keep answering the bell when it got close uh, and never got behind. I think that was really important with the crowd the way it was and us not losing the lead. Uh, continued to stay a step ahead and, and getting an extra possession and getting a field goal before half or a big kick return and getting another score um, when it was when we were losing the momentum. And then uh, second half, uh, putting a couple of big drives together as well as the defense, even though we didn't play exceptionally well on defense, we played well at critical times and against one of the best offenses in college football to force a couple of punts in our territory which really changed, I think, some of the momentum that they had. And then we were able to continue to keep that two-score lead till the very end. So uh, proud of the guys. Uh, we talked about it yesterday as really 12 one-week seasons in college football. And that's what it is, guys. It, uh, um, it doesn't matter if it's what league it's in, what conference it's in. Uh, anybody can beat anybody. So you better prepare, better have great uh, preparation, focus. Uh, and uh, this week, it's no different with Texas Tech. So it'll be an exciting week for us at home on Ag Day here at K-State. Excited about uh, uh, our agriculture background and uh, being an ag school and being a land-grant uh, university. Uh, it's uh, going to be a special day here at the Bill. Coach, uh, we've all focused on Adrian. He was spectacular. Deuce is, was really good. Um, but how much better was the blocking in this game as opposed to Tulane? Uh, sustained blocks and that's the you know we ID'd guys better with a lot of stunts and movements that uh, teams have done to us um, and you can ID guys uh, and you either sustain them or you fall off of blocks and I thought we did a really good job of sustaining blocks and not falling off of them and really did a good job at the point of attack the other thing I know helped us in the run game is the amount of tempo that Colin ran and, and, and tried to go fast um, we believed that they were going to wait to see what we lined up in, and I think we caught them uh, a few times. That gave us not a free 10 yards, 12 yards, but gave us um, some second in shorts or got us a first down simply by going fast. And when you go back and look at the film of what Texas Tech did to Texas, how impressive was it? Very impressive. Um, got down and uh, um, sign of a really good football team, uh, guys that believe, and, and I know they're really well coached. Um, so when they were down and found the resolve to continue to fight and stay in it till the bitter end, and then uh, um, find a way to win it in overtime, and it was a huge win for uh, for Joey and his, uh, you know, got a signature win right away. Any thoughts on this game was pre-designated for the streaming service? Every other game was put on hold, but this game, and this is a significant game now in the conference race. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't ever think about that, probably like you do, Fitz. Um, but it's yeah, that's why I say it's one week seasons. You you, it's hard to predict what's going to happen uh, in any conference and in any league. Um, and so, 
you know, we we'll play them when they play them and where they ask us to play them on and whatever network it is. And uh, uh, our guys are just excited about uh, being one and zero in league play, and that's the thing that's uh, the most important for us is is can try, trying to continue to play well in league play. Chris, do you have an injury update on us for uh, three guys, Drake, Cheatham, Nat, Nate Matlack, and Andrew Langang? Yeah, um, Andrew is still out indefinitely. We're trying to learn more from the docs. I really can't get into what it is, um, but we're trying to learn more this week. I can't tell you if he'll be available. We're still waiting on some more um, appointments and tests uh, for him. Drake will be fine. And Nate played just a couple of plays on Saturday and couldn't um, be effective the way that Nate feels like he can be. And I think that helped us because we were smart enough, uh, athletic training staff, to shut him down. So I think it'll help him this week be more healthy. You mentioned tempo here already today. Texas Tech goes as fast as anybody in the yeah. country. I think they got 100 plays against Texas. Do yeah. you go fast against him, or do you go contrarian well, and try to slow it down? Yeah. Um, in the past, I, I'd have said we had to probably slow it down. Um, but for our off offense to be successful, they need to be in rhythm. And the one way you get in rhythm is by going faster. And, and we were able to slow it down when we needed to. Uh, I, I think CK had a great plan of when to go fast um, and when to slow it down. And we have to continue to mix that up. Um, the thing that you know, I hope I, – I haven't looked. You guys know it better than I do. Uh, I don't know what the temperature is going to be like at 11 o'clock. Uh, on Saturday morning, uh, I know last week it was 90 on the field, uh, and it, it was it was hot. Our guys were were gassed. Um, the big thing for us, whether you go fast, whether you go slow, you better convert third and fourth down. And we were 10 of 19, and they were five of 15. That resulted in us hanging on to the football. I think nine more minutes. If we'd have had 25 more plays and lost those nine minutes, I don't know where we would have found them, especially on the defensive front. So if you're if you're going fast and still moving the chains, I think it's great. You did play because of that heat. You played a lot more guys on defense yeah. in that last game. Was there anybody who got extra playing time and impressed you while they were out there? You know, um, T.J. Smith I pl thought played well um, and did some really good things. You know, T.J. was coming off of an injury and, and wasn't probably – I know he wasn't, didn't even play the first game and then uh, – wasn't probably full go, and now he's getting back, um, and that that'll help us um, because uh, TJ's a good football player that um, probably got to get more reps to, to to even that out with Kobe because um, Kobe's playing really well, but he's playing an awful lot. Um, you know, Nick Allen uh, played some Mike, played some Will, um, Cody Stuffelbean came in, played some plays, Pick played more plays because of Nate, uh, my man Uso. Uh, played a couple of big time snaps, and uh, he's going to get more snaps probably. But uh, you know, Eli's Eli's a difference maker in there, and and we're excited to see what Uso d could do because he can help us. After the game, I asked Julius Prince about delivering hits to send a message to their receivers. Kind of broke into a big grin. How rugged were they, and how effective were the corners throughout the game? Yeah, uh, we played we played well in the secondary, even though we gave up a couple of explosives that we don't want to give up. Um, but you're going to against an offense that's that talented. Uh, but I liked that the way that our corners were aggressive in, in Julius, especially in man coverage. He made a couple of plays one on one on some on some outside balls that were big, and then uh, he he tackled really physically. And uh, that's Julius. He's getting better and better. And I know he's played a lot of football for us, but just understanding what we're doing defensively. I think he's really starting to come into his own and understand our scheme and where he fits, and he played well. And alluded to a bit earlier, but how, do, how much does that prepare you for Miles Price and Texas Tech upcoming? Um, you know, hopefully uh, it prepares us pretty well as far as the amount of uh, throws, passing game, open sets. Uh, ball coming out of the quarterback's hands. These guys are are exceptional. It's not just Miles Price. There's a lot of guys uh, that can beat you. They've got running backs that can beat you. A lot of wide receivers. Um, you, 
The guy that's really helping us right now is Adrian Lara on scout team. That kid spins it around really, really well with a lot of different wideouts that we use. And Adrian's really challenging us, and it's going to make us better uh, when we do do some spread sets because Adrian can look guys off and, and put ball in tight, tight windows. And so um, it's a big challenge every week in the passing game. And uh, we're, we're fortunate we've got uh, really good scout wide receivers and Adrian playing quarterback uh, on the scouts. Between you know having line gang out, you know, you know what happened to Taylor Portier, BB's cramps, Leviston's yep. cramps. What can you say about your offensive line kind of cutting through that? Yeah. Haven't given up a sack against an FBS team yet. This year. Yeah, they played really well, and uh, you're right, they were they were beat up and and they're they were fatigued, but uh, they weren't going to be denied. You know, you weren't going to get Hadley or Gilly out of the game. I think KT's playing so well right now. It's fun watching him play with confidence and. All of us have known KT's ability uh, over the last few years, but to see KT playing with such confidence and, and having fun playing, um, he's playing at an all-conference level. Duff is pretty silent, but playing really, really well. He's just doing what Duff does, just does his job to a high, high level. Um, and then, yeah, Biebs went out, so uh, Dawson Del Forge came in and did a nice job. Um, you know, not having Liney in, we, we lost a backup, especially at the tackle spot because that's where Liney was playing. So Biebs would have been our kick-out guy to tackle um, and didn't happen. And we ended up giving, I think, Coop an IV bag or so in the third quarter, and, and then he was able to come back and finish it. But, uh, you know, this global warming stuff is killing us. It's, it's so dang hot all the time. We can't get this thing cooled down. How much – blitzing you guys are kind of receiving from opposing defenses is Deuce Vaughn's pass protection really shined this year yeah he's been really good he's he's worked at it as far as the mental side of knowing who he has and um he's standing up and, and stoning some guys he's a, he's a really strong kid and sometimes you don't realize how strong he is when you're coming at him full speed uh and he plays with good pad level and and with a good base and he delivers a blow he doesn't catch it and i think that's the big thing from a pass protection is uh, as a running back you don't want to catch it you want to deliver the blow and he's stepped up and made some really nice blocks uh that's allowed us to stay sack free so to speak as well as it just gives adrian more time when a play breaks down to either go make a play um, with his arm or his legs. Coach, obviously you talked about giving up some big plays to Oklahoma, but specifically for a kid like Omar Daniels, how much is, for in a better sense of the word, giving up that big yeah. play going to help his development? Yeah, Omar's a confident kid, and Omar's a really good football player. He got beat by one of the best wide receivers in the Big 12 and probably in the country in Mims. And, um, you know, it's, some of it's a technique thing. Uh, but you're right. I, I appreciate Omar because if you're going to play DB, you're going to get beat. Bottom line, you're going to get beat at times. And nobody wants to. You could be a, a, a freshman or you could be a fifth-year senior. It's going to happen. It's just how you respond when it does happen. And uh, uh, Omar will respond. He's a confident guy. We've got a lot of belief in Omar. And uh, um, it, it probably will help him. Um, nobody wants to get beat, but uh, um, you, you learn to survive and uh, learn from it. And then as far as Khalid Duke's development has gone, did he take a major step forward in that game against Oklahoma just with how fast they played? Um, he continues to take steps forward just with the amount of time he missed and then getting him back um, when you know we started school and the season started. You know, In our mind, we've played four games, so that's about four weeks. That's his training camp. You know, he missed the three plus weeks of training camp. That's his training camp. So um, he's fresh. He's in shape. Uh, he's moving around really well. He's confident. It's fun to see the the look on. Khalid's having fun playing, and uh, uh, it's great to see uh, with some of the challenges that he's been able to overcome. Uh, that his best football is still in front of him this year. Ben Sinnott was your leading receiver against Oklahoma. Was that something you saw in prep, or are you just wanting to get him worked in more in the passing game? Um, I think it was something that we saw in prep to try to get some seam routes and vertical routes, and he happened to be the guy that uh, either was open or Adrian did a nice job of looking off the, the safety and, and finding him sitting down in the zone. And, uh, you know, that's it's not an easy catch because you don't know where the guy's coming from. You don't know if you're going to get um, – hit, undercut, whatever. You don't know where the defender sometime is. And um, those are big-time plays. I mean, those were explosive plays. We talk about explosive plays. 
the the two seam routes that I know he had, I think one was on the first drive uh, that set us up for a score, and then another one came uh, when we were maybe tied or had to have a drive um, and made some kids. He carried some guys. He's a big guy. He carried some guys for five, six, seven more yards. But uh, um, it was good to see um, Ben add some things to our passing game with our wide receivers who all played well. And with Texas Tech at quarterback, I, I – I think it's a very slim, maybe slim to none chance that Tyler Shuck plays, but are you dedicating any prep time towards him? Uh, we've got to watch the film. Uh, it's hard to beat Texas and make a change. You know, I don't know if they will or not. That's that's uh, coaches, you know, Joey's got to decide that. But um, we'll watch the film because I think there are some differences between the two guys. Um, but Smith's playing really, really well right now and, um, you know, played, I think, dynamite against Texas. So, um Obviously, that's more of our focal point, but uh, you know, you never know who's going to come in offensively, defensively for either team and make make a play or two that could turn the game. And uh, I think on the on the fifty five yard run, uh, Adrian pulled the ball down, but I was wondering how many of his runs were design plays, and also how his threat as a run runner, how much. Does that maybe open things up for Deuce a little bit? Well, it definitely opens things up. I think we can all see that. Uh, the touchdown runs were all designed runs. Uh, the the long run obviously wasn't a design run. We had, you know, just talking on the headsets with CK, we were going to try to run four vertical again and see if we could throw a seam ball for 15 or, or 20 yards. And they did a good job covering the seams. And uh, I think Adrian, which I was so appreciative of, had the mindset that if the seam was covered, I'm gone because we couldn't have thrown a, a shorter comeback if the seams were covered and probably gotten the first down and we'd have punted in a one-score game. And so once he saw the seams being taken away, uh, I think that lifted some of the underneath coverage out of there. And then when he when he took off and ran, he just had to beat one guy to get to the corner. And then I think the thing that impressed um, – all of us and, and what we were all wanting to see and we did see was um, he put it in another gear in the fourth quarter and that was a gear that uh, uh, I had seen and uh, knew uh, was in him um, and he knew it was in him and uh, to take to have that second gear and to split the safeties and, and outrun everybody and then just the smartness of, of sliding and keeping the ball in play so that the clock had to keep running because we knew at that time it became, um, whether we got a touchdown or a field goal, it became uh, a clock issue in, in possessions and timeouts left. Can you describe, as a defensive coach, the most difficult part about preparing for an air raid offense that throws the ball 55, 60 times a game? Yeah, just trying to keep the ball in front of you, trying not to give up explosive plays is, is the first thing. Um, there's a lot of motions. Uh, a lot of what we call formation into the boundary, where they're stacking receivers to the short side, um, trying to just outnumber you and trying to make sure that we you know, can even out the numbers, so to speak. Um, you have to be able to get a pass rush. It's always sometimes hard to get a pass rush because the ball comes out. Um, but if you don't try to get a pass rush, then they're not going to have the ball come out, and then they're going to hold it for a little bit. There's a lot of different things. And so you know, for Coach Klanderman and that defensive staff, it's – it's trying to change some things up. You've got to be able to play man. You've got to be able to play zone. You've got to be able to pressure. You've got to be able to drop eight. You, you have to keep changing the picture, uh, which seems like an easy thing to do. But when the tempo is as fast as it is, you probably got to limit some of your calls. And I know Oklahoma's offense is based a little bit more on finding success on the ground running the ball, but it is still based on explosive plays through mm -hmm. the air. Is there any benefit towards playing an offense like Oklahoma and then being able to transition game plan wise into tech? Yeah, um, I think the systems are, are a little bit different, uh, but the tempo is not. So the tempo helps us and the fact that we had to get ready to go right away again. Um, but, you know, the systems are a little bit different. These guys can still run the ball. They've got two really good running backs that uh, – been around there a long time and have been productive for a long time. So it's not one of those things where you can say, we're going to drop everybody and just say you're going to run the ball. That's the first thing we have to try to do is, is shut down the run game uh, as best we can, or at least control it. I shouldn't say shut it down. I don't think you're going to shut it down. Just control it so that, once again, you're not having those second and fours and explosive plays given up. And then after 
after the game, you said we're not looking at Texas Tech at all, but I know you kind of follow this 24-hour rule. Mm -hmm. What was that transition like for you and the rest of your staff and players on Sunday? Yeah, well, the 24-hour rule came into about a six-hour rule because um, by the time we got home, thanks Dr. Dr. Trace and the and the pride for being here at Veneer. When we got back, our kids loved that. Like that's one of the neatest traditions that uh, is around in college football and to see guys like Josh Hayes and Kobe Savage and, and Adrian and any new player come back to Veneer and see the droves of, of band members and cheer squad and, and that that's special and can't thank uh, Dr. Trace enough for getting that done. Um, but, you know, so we get home at three or four in the morning and uh, um, had a TV show to do in the morning. So I uh, didn't sleep a whole lot on, on Saturday night and uh, was back here ready to get to work. And so um, someday we'll get caught up. But, we, you know, you're, you're fortunate to win, and you know when you play on the road at night, it, that's, that's the disadvantage. You, you've not – coaches will bounce back. You know, we'll find a way to bounce back. It's the players that are going to bed at 3 and 4 in the morning. Uh, we have treatment on Sunday. You know, they don't have anything after that, but – uh, you know, then we're practicing Monday, practicing Tuesday, Wednesday. I mean, it's a it's a normal week, and it takes your bodies are beat up anyway, and it takes you got to get your bodies back, and that's our main focus this week is um, getting the players' bodies back. Coaches will get their bodies back, but the players got to get them back. Kobe Savage was named Big Twelve Newcomer of the Week. I was just curious what you could say about Kobe. Yeah, Kobe's uh, been a, a a great addition for us. Uh, we knew it in the spring when we brought him here. Uh, because of his energy and love for football. And he just has continued to improve from spring to summer and then through fall camp. But if you'd, if you'd track him for a day, when that kid doesn't sit, doesn't probably sleep a whole lot, that kid is always doing something football, whether it's recovery to uh, doing extra drills after practice. Or I remember coming up here on a, on a Friday, Saturday, uh, during June when we'd have recruits up here and it's 90-some degrees out and he and a handful of guys are out there working out all the friggin' time in the heat uh, to the amount of time he sits in Coach Klanerman's office and just talks ball. Um, it's fun because he's reaping the rewards, but he's put the work and the effort in. And so it's it's neat when it, when a kid has the success that, that he is solely, is surely uh, has earned. Another thing, speaking to his dad this morning, one of the things that really uh, um, that they really appreciated was the opportunity to meet you that first day on the recruiting trip. I was wondering maybe if maybe the message you sent to them or if you what you might recall of that visit. <laughs> Great family for starters, um, and uh, uh, very close knit family, very invested in their in in their children, and um, we kind of. Do what we always do. We show them who we are, show them uh, the kind of people we are, the impact of all the people, not not Coach Kleiman, but all the people that are going to impact him from nutrition to strength and conditioning to athletic training to academics to uh, assistant coaches to everybody that's going to have an impact on that kid's life. And that's, that's the 50-year plan. That's not the three-year plan. That's the 50-year plan. And that's what we try to sell to all our people. We're going to give you an unbelievable degree, an unbelievable opportunity to be successful with a bunch of really great guys in the locker room that care about each other, that love each other. But I want to make sure in the next 50 years you're going to be an unbelievable community member, father, husband, leader, whatever it may be. And um, that's something that I think everybody in this football department um, shows a kid when they come on a visit. And that's the difference. Chris, I know you addressed the – I'm sorry, I kind of missed it because Kellis is asking the question again. Uh, Chris Bennett earlier oh. said his season was perfect against Oklahoma. What was different about that? Um, I appreciate you asking about Chris. Um, his mindset never changes, and uh, I just love the way he approaches things. He never gets too high. He never gets too low. Chris and I both know he needs to make the short field goals he has. There's no reason for me to go up and yell at the kid and say, what the heck are you doing? It's like missing a four-foot putt. You know, everybody misses them. Um, well, Gene doesn't, but most people do. I don't usually have four-foot putts. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and Chris just continued to work, and that's all he did. And um, I don't care. I don't even know what the distance of the field goals were. That place was rocking. 
and it he didn't flinch, and he banged him through with confidence. And uh, I'm excited for Chris because he he's we all know what what kind of leg he has and what athlete is. Um, I'm excited for his future. I, I know you talked about it briefly after the game, but when you get in those substitution patterns with another team and you see him subbing late. Is that something you do work on each yeah. week, saying like, all right, there's 20 seconds on the clock, you get out there and take 18 seconds here? Absolutely. You, ha you have to. I mean, that's the rule. And, and they, they put the rule in play that uh, if you substitute, you have time to match that substitution. And we knew it was a critical situation. Um, and they substituted late. And I screamed in the headset, send somebody, send somebody. And Buddy did the perfect thing and sent a defensive end for a defensive end. And those kids don't run 4-4. So it's going to take them a little while to get out there and then take them a while to get back. Mm -hmm. And then I think they substituted again another guy. Um, yeah, I mean, you hate it as an offensive coach, but that's the rule. Um, and so it, uh, it was a benefit for us. And, and uh, we're fortunate because it, it worked out. I think they had a delay on that, on that time. And so I don't know if that – I think that was one that knocked them into a punt that they were going to go for it. So, yeah, we work on that. And um, uh, really sharp by Coach Wyatt to get a DN for a DN. It'd be easy to just ship the corner out that was closest to us. But I don't know if it was Mott for stuff or something like that. But we went DN for DN and, and took our time. Last question. Was there anything that – you maybe didn't notice or didn't get a chance to appreciate on the field about Adrian's performance that looking back over film really stood out to you? Um, the calmness that he had, um, the confidence that he had, uh, nothing rattled him. And we were able to get to the line of scrimmage most of the time soon enough that he didn't like something. He was calm, came up, made some changes to some plays, and got us in the right call. That was the cool thing that I saw in front of 84,000 people that he's just like, all right, I got this under control. Coach, real quick, uh, you have a birthday today. You're over 50. Uh, it is Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. Have you had your PSA scored? Yes, I have. Thank you. Well done. Appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>